Madam President, welcome to the program. É um prazer. I know that you have been calling this a political coup. There are many, many people who disagree with you and who did not like the fact that you took that to New York and told the world that there is a coup underway against you here in Brazil. But even your supporters, Madam President, says that what's happening is constitutional. Perhaps the legal basis, according to one of your supporters, was flimsy, but nonetheless, this is happening within Brazilian institutions. Can you tell me why then you fiddled the books, cooked the books, in order to hide that budget hole before the 214 elections? And do you think that that is electoral fraud or an impeachable offense under the current provisions? Why did you do it and what did you do? Nós Não modificamos, nós fizemos o maior... When we say there is no legal ground to the ongoing impeachment process, it's because we engage in the biggest budget slashing exercise in 2015. Never before in Brazil did the government slash spending as much as we did in 2015. And they are questioning the measures that were taken while implementing the budget. It has nothing to do with the previous electoral process, nor it has to do with cooking or fiddling the books or accounts. It does have to do with something that has always been current, ongoing practice in Brazil by all administrations prior to mine, even term in office to 2011, 12 and 13. That was acceptable practice. It was also regular, ordinary practice under the Lula da Silva and the administration also under the previous Cardoso administrations. So if then it was not a crime, why is it an impeachable offense today? But I want to ask you this, and there's no easy way to say it. Madam President, you have been rated one of the worst leaders in the world, one of the worst presidents. Your popularity right now is around 10%. That's really, really low. You were impeached by the, or the Congress decided to send your impeachment case by an overwhelming majority that surprised even your supporters. You don't seem to have very many friends in Congress. Do you think you are going to survive the impeachment process in the Senate? The Brazilian Constitution does envisage impeachment, does contain impeachment provisions, yes. But whoever tells you that impeachment provisions are there should go ahead and complete and finish the sentence. We live in a presidentialist system. There has to be a violation. There has to be a violation of the Constitution for there to be an impeachment procedure. In Brazil, a presidentialist system, just as the case in the U.S., no one can carry out an impeachment process just out of sheer impopularity of the president, because impopularity is a cyclical thing. If it were not so, all presidents or all prime ministers in Europe that experience 20 percent unemployment rates would inevitably have to go through an impeachment process, because they, too, experience substantial drops in their popularity. I hear what you're saying, but do you think you're going to survive? Do you think you will be president at the end of this process? I wish to tell you one thing, more than just thinking that I will survive. I will fight to survive, not just for my term in office, but I will fight because what I'm advocating and defending is the democratic principle that governs political place in Brazil. Who found the impeachment process against me? All of them are being charged for corruption charges, especially the Speaker of the House. My life was turned upside down. They look everywhere to find something against me. And there is no corruption charge at all against me. Well, because they have no grounds to legally trigger the impeachment process, I notice that the actual, the ratings or popularity of those who are undertaking the impeachment process is lower, much lower than mine today and me. The level of rejection is much higher. Their level of rejection is much higher. So the same rationale or justification that is not at all in line with the presidentialist system. After all, I was given 54 million votes. I am not a prime minister. I am the head of government and the head of state. My 54 million votes can only be cancelled and done away by means of free direct elections in Brazil. The impeachment process of today is overshadowing and concealing 
hiding a free electoral process that is not at all in line with the Constitution. There are several ways to undertake a coup d'etat. One possibility is by resorting to weapons. The other way is by tearing the Constitution apart. Yet, a third method of undertaking a coup is a much more, say, discreet, low-profile and polite coup. But still, it is a coup. Do you not think, though, that as far as this has got right now, an impeachment process could be even more divisive for this country? Do you ever think that for the sake of this country, you should perhaps resign? I think the term in office does not belong to me. It does not belong to me only. It belongs to the 54 million votes that were given to me and also to the 110 million that took part. But 60 to 70 percent of the people, two-thirds of the people want you to step down, Mrs. President. The process of removing a president the process of removing a president from office cannot possibly boil down cutting in an opinion poll. I mean, the electoral process, of course, is it's time for discussion nationwide. It is not a frozen snapshot at a given point in time. Can you imagine if the impeachment fed, you know, is replicated elsewhere? Every time the president experiences ups and downs in his popularity ratings, he's going to be removed from office, he or she? You know, a present in view of a crisis, and, by the way, we did not create this current crisis. This crisis of today stems back from 2008 and has hit emerging countries very hard in the 2014 and 15. How much do you think the woman thing is playing in this impeachment drama, because you're a woman, the first female president of this country? I think there's a part very strong I think there is a very strong element that has to do with the fact that I am a woman. Number one, because they have often said that I was a very harsh woman, and I have always replied as follows. Yes, I am a harsh woman surrounded by cute, polite, gentle, and kind men around me, and only women are described as being harsh when they take office in a high position. Now, at the same time in Parliament, in the past 15 months, Something has consistently been there in the opposition assessment about me. There was a point in time when they said that because I was so much under pressure that I had to be either depressed or going through a major nervous breakdown. They even wrote entire articles and published news about my alleged nervous breakdown. And they forget that we have a tremendous sense of resistance to challenges, difficulties and crisis. I mean lessons we learn in life as women because of the social role we perform, especially those of us who belong to a generation that began to have many more opportunities to take part in public life or work in professions that were unavailable to women up until recently. We have had to, of course, face up to a myriad of challenges. Madam President, you know Hillary Clinton is running to be the first female president of the United States. She, on the campaign trail, said, you know, unlike my husband, she's talking about Bill Clinton, unlike Barack Obama, I'm not a great politician. I'm a great doer, I have great passion, I'm committed to being the best leader I can, but I'm not a great politician. Do you wish you were a better politician? Lula was a great politician. It yeah. seems that you've suffered because you're not a good politician. Lula is a great politician. Lula was certainly a better politician than I am. He's a great politician in that sense, you know, I do agree with Hillary Clinton. Yes, I could echo her same words, her words to describe myself. I am not a great politician as Lula was. I am a person who does things. I am a doer. I am a devoted person. I am a person who, in the course of my entire life, has been devoted, dedicated to my people. You're also a woman who's gone through prison and torture. Not many other women running for office have. How has that informed your state of mind and your resistance right now? Sem sombra de dúvida, toda minha experiência de vida. Without a shadow of a doubt, my entire life experience makes me stronger. I believe I am able to realize that under any circumstances, I mean any, any circumstances whatsoever, 
it is always much better to live in a democracy than in a dictatorship. I have that certainty and firm conviction in my mind. You won't talk about yourself, your fortitude. I'm trying to find out from you, not the benefits of democracy versus dictatorship, but about your character. Eu prefiro viver. Eu prefiro viver. I prefer to live with as much freedom as possible. I do not believe that we can flourish as human beings, as persons in time when one is deprived of freedom. And that is a source of strength to me. I have huge resistance and strength to fight for my convictions.